One thing that separates a fine timepiece from just a regular watch is going to be the materials that are selected for all of the different components that go into the watch. Things like plastic, you'll find on an inexpensive watch. In a fine timepiece, you're gonna find that most of those materials, instead of being plastic, will actually be metal. There's a number of different alloys depending on whether the part is inside the watch or outside the watch, and also what that particular part is used for in the watch. Metal should be able to last a very long time. And with metal parts, we can always remake them. Plastic parts have to be molded, so oftentimes, there's no remaking a plastic part because a watchmaker would have to make a mold in order to remake that plastic part. And chances are that plastic part was inexpensive in the first place for an inexpensive watch that was designed to be replaced rather than repaired. The exterior components of a watch need to be able to handle the elements. They need to be able to last a long time while being exposed to chemicals, sunlight, sweat, salt water from the ocean, chlorine from a swimming pool, and even from water when you wash your hands. They need to be able to stand up to body oils, and all kinds of different things that will end up on the outside of a watch. Lotions, cologne, perfume. These are all things that could be damaging to certain metal alloys. So on the exterior of a watch, we will choose an alloy that resists corrosion. Alloys like stainless steel, particularly 316 stainless steel for cases and crowns and screws that are on the exterior of a watch. That way we don't have to worry about corrosion due to salt water, sweat, body oils, any of these things that come in contact with the outside of a watch. 316 stainless steel is a very good material for the exterior components. The one downside to a stainless steel like 316 is that it's relatively soft in the category of steel. This is why we don't use 316 stainless steel for small parts inside of a watch. We need those parts to be extremely hard. 316 stainless steel is not nearly hard enough for the steel components inside of the watch. When we go inside the watch into the movement, we will find either hardenable stainless steels used for movement screws, movement pinions and pins, or we will find a carbon steel, which is not a stainless steel. So if water gets inside or moisture gets inside, these parts will rust, but that should be fine because we should not get water inside of our watch. Carbon steel, is a steel that is soft when we cut it and shape it into the part we want it to become, but then we can heat treat it and harden it to the level of hardness that we require for a watch movement. Carbon steel is the traditional material for pinions and screws inside of a watch movement. 
More recently, hardenable stainless steels have been introduced to watch movements. These stainless steels, like 440C or some other specialty materials that are made just for the watchmaking industry, those materials are stainless steels that can be hardened. And the reason we need a hard steel for those components is that they are very small, so we have very small threads and very small screw slots. We also have very small leaves on the pinions, which are like teeth on gears. And we need these parts not to shear when we wind up a watch. We don't want those pinions to just break off with the torque that's being put into a gear train. And we also don't want screws to break when we tighten the screw head down. We don't want the threads to break loose or strip, and we don't want these screw slots to deform. So we need these materials to be very hard. Other than steel inside of a watch movement, you'll find that the largest mass of the movement, the bridges and main plate, which is kind of like the body of the watch movement, that's gonna be made of a brass. Usually it is a C360 brass. And brass is a gold colored material that has copper in it. The brass parts are usually finished with some sort of plating. That way we don't have any kind of discoloration. Brass will turn a little bit brown or a little bit green depending on which alloy you have and it can be unsightly. So usually these components are plated with gold or rhodium, depending on what component it is. Another material that you will find in a couple of instances inside of a wristwatch movement is beryllium copper. And beryllium copper is an interesting material. It looks like a brass. However, it is not going to expand or contract with heat. So there's no temperature variations in the material, which makes it very ideal for balance wheels. If you have any kind of thermal expansion on a balance wheel, you can have timing issues. So we wanna use something like beryllium copper. When you have other materials that are being used for exterior components of a watch, like cases and bracelets, those materials need to be corrosion resistant and relatively strong. So if you have materials like gold, in a modern watch, you will find that they are 18 karat gold. And that is because the gold has been alloyed, so it's not pure gold, which would be 24 karat, it's 18 karat. That gold has been alloyed with other elements to make sure that it's hard enough that it won't just deform and fall apart in applications like watches. Rose gold has a slightly higher copper content. It will still be 18 karat. However, chlorine in water, in a municipal water source, so when you wash your hands or if you jump in a swimming pool with an 18 karat gold, rose gold watch, the chlorine can actually bind with the copper and remove copper from the surface of the gold. This is why a rose gold watch, after many years, can start to appear as though it is a yellow gold watch. And this is simply from that chlorine that's in all of our municipal water sources, leaching out the copper. So there are now special rose gold alloys that retain the copper with a tighter bond. I'm not a chemist, but that is what a chemist or metallurgist had to come up with in order to hold on to the copper tighter so that chlorine couldn't take that out of the rose gold and change the color. 
really everything that we do in the higher end watch world is try to figure out how we can make our watches last longer. And something like a special alloy for rose gold was required to retain the same initial coloring of that gold for a longer period of time. If we use a white gold, white gold alloys oftentimes still retain a little bit of a yellowish color. So to get a pure white, white gold watch, oftentimes they are plated with rhodium. This rhodium plating will come off when polishing a watch or just over time wearing it. So that rhodium plating needs to be restored when the watch is polished. There are also now alloys of white gold that are pure white without having to plate with rhodium. And this makes them last longer, makes it easier to polish and service these watches and keep them looking the way they were intended to look. Of all watch case materials, the heaviest one will be platinum, followed by gold, followed by stainless steel, and then that brings us into an even lighter material, titanium. Titanium is a very good material for watches. It's extremely corrosion resistant. It is also very lightweight and comfortable to wear. Titanium has some interesting properties too. It has a, an almost self-healing property where scratches on titanium will fade over time because it will kind of oxidize itself and kind of like a healing process will start to hide blemishes like scratches. The titanium alloy that's typically used on finer watches is called grade five titanium. The nice thing about titanium is that it is just as strong as stainless steel or 316 stainless steel. The difference is that titanium is significantly lighter. So the strength to weight ratio is better with titanium. When you're dealing with any of the parts in a watch that help keep time, such as the balance wheel or the hairspring, we have to select materials that are better with temperature, magnetism, and things that are outside of a watch that can affect those components. So the balance wheel will be made of something like beryllium copper, and the hairspring will be made of a very special alloy. In a modern watch, you'll find that a hairspring is made of something called Nivorox. This is a patented alloy, and there are other patented alloys that exist that do the same thing. They are not affected uh, by magnetism, and they can withstand temperature changes without having an effect on timing. Now that we have special alloys that are better equipped to deal with these exterior forces, we don't have to worry about mechanical means of altering the rate of the balance wheel and hairspring. Over the years of watchmaking, the alloys used in watches have changed depending on the component. A watchmaker can always repair these metal components or remanufacture these metal components. And this is one of the reasons I love watchmaking because watches have been designed to be worn and used and repaired over and over again for many lifetimes, hopefully, as long as we like them enough and are willing to spend a little extra time and money to take care of them, they will certainly outlast 
us.